name's E, and welcome to Hedgetown, the podcast where we discuss the strange and unusual fascinations of Gen Z, whether this be an unusual obsession with a fighting anime clown or a fixation with strawberry cows. We've got it all here for students like you. Today on set, I have my good friend AJ today, a visual here at MSA. Hi, AJ. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing pretty okay. Okay. Not having a mental crisis. Well, I see you drinking a monster, so I have to disagree. <laughs> it's an addiction at this point. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much a visual thing, TM. Ah, uh, pardon. This is not sponsored by Monster Energy. Anyways. It should be. But <laughs> I have some questions that I would like to ask you today, if that's okay. Sure thing. In your experience, what do you feel makes a good ally? I believe a good ally should be someone who's generally supportive of the community. Mm. I know a lot of uh, particularly like highly religious people aren't 100% okay with their children being gay. And I think that that's something that we should really work on and kind of clear the negative air and stigma around being mm-hmm. gay or LGBT or anything else within the community because that's just, it's not healthy to harbor a hatred or dislike for someone even if you consider them to be slightly different than you. Especially not for that reason. But definitely. Especially something that you were born. Like, you did not choose to be anything. This is just how you are. And if someone can't accept that, then they are not being a proper ally or a loving person. Mm-hmm. Um, what ways would you say you can promote LGBTQ voices across media, petitions, things like that? Uh, I think that just in general, we should help educate people and teach them about uh, what it's like to have LGBT children or family members or people around them. Because, I mean, anywhere can be someone who's gay, bi, uh, trans. It's Mm -hmm. really not just a, you know, closed off standalone thing. I think we should work on humanizing characters in media because there is LGBT representation, but a lot of them are stereotypical. A lot of them are very basic. You always have that, you know... Um, flamboyant gay friend or the bisexual who has sex with absolutely anyone and I just I don't find that to be a healthy representation it or they're often them. portrayed as like monsters and yeah, social media the villains, right? especially like Disney villains and things I mean that's who you grew up relating to as young LGBT kids and that's not healthy like you queer should... coding yes if you're going to code someone as LGBT then make sure that they're at least a positive form of representation or at least outright say that they are LGBT and still offer that positive representation. Exactly. Um, In what ways do you notice good and bad behaviors in activism, like, say, performative activism? I believe activism is very iffy because usually it depends on the reception as well as the things that you were saying. Mm -hmm. I think that in general trying to educate people is a very good approach. But also, don't try to explain to someone who chooses not to listen. A lot of people have a very big problem with, especially on social media, where they find someone who completely opposes the LGBT community in every single way. And some people you cannot get to. Some people you can argue as much as you'd like, but they choose not to listen. And it's very important to stand by what you believe in, but also learn to disengage from a conversation that's going to turn toxic and very homophobic and transphobic, because a lot of people just generally hate LGBT people no matter what you say. And it could potentially be harmful to just continue in that conversation. Yes, because some people might be reading through the replies and they might be a centrist and just in general don't really know what's going on. And then they might take sides with someone who has a very um, just harsh views because they can't listen to your side completely. Um, Or a person of that minority reading through and then... Yes, and then believing that every single person who uh, is uneducated and doesn't understand them is going to end up attacking this person just as the person did in the conversation, which is not always the case. There are people who don't understand LGBT issues who aren't transphobic or homophobic. They just don't understand and should be informed. Okay, so what ways would you say that we can go about supporting the LGBTQ community without harming ourselves or getting into an engagement that's not healthy? I believe in general we should just celebrate the community and offer support and love to people who are new in the community and to people who are young and might not fully understand what the LGBT community is like in general. Um, I find that we should have open walls and very loving community and build up a very family-like environment, which we have done a very good job of. I'm not going to deny that. And in general, just build up this positive community so that way people from the outside can say, these people are just people 
who are, you know, born as, born to be um, gay or transgender, and there's nothing different about them. They're just the same as you and I. Sort of blocking out the negative representation that's on social media. Yes, and also there are a lot of debates within the LGBT community that turn very toxic very quickly. I mean, there was, um, particularly in the transgender community, there was a trans medicalist versus a very open transgender uh, like debate. And the problem is that that turns toxic way too fast. And if you're going to have a debate, remember to be civil. Even if someone shares your side, they're not going to share your exact opinion on absolutely everything. And that needs to be understood to have healthy conversations, not only with people who aren't LGBT, but also with people who are. Mm -hmm. So creating a safe dynamic, not only with people outside of the community, but people within the community as far as debates go. Definitely. Okay. So how do you feel about big brand corporations taking advantage of the gay community during Pride Month, per se? Uh, I'd say that it's very, very performative and very fake. I mean, for one month, they just all of a sudden very uh, much so support a community that they tend to uh, disagree with and tend to silence. Mm -hmm. And of course, there are a lot of brands that are just strictly homophobic, which you just should all out. I'm going to say it, if you're LGBT, you should try to avoid purchasing anything from those brands in order to help show them that people will not continue <coughs> to deal with... Chick-fil-A. Yeah. <laughs> Hobby Lobby. But yeah, just please protest them if you're able to. But um, back on track, I would say that a lot of brands are just very fake about it. And it's it's nice to feel like a brand cares about you even if it's just for a short time, but remember that they don't actually support the LGBT community as much as they pretend to. For one month, they might fake it, but that doesn't mean that they stand wholehearted like by the community all of the time. So please don't put all of your trust into a brand. They don't actually care about you. Just they care because about the bottom line. they make representation for one month. Yes. It, look, when you want to support an LGBT cause, then you should directly support communities and also organizations that are nonprofits that offer help to uh, LGBT teens and LGBT adults and not just brands that offer support to themselves. Like the Trevor Project. Definitely. Yes. Uh, the Trevor Project for reference is a um, organization that helps out trans and queer youth that are homeless or in need or have been outed by their families. Well, thank you, AJ, for coming on set with me today. It was very enjoyable to have you in our company. Um, say bye to the audience. Bye, audience. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you guys want to hear more of our podcast, we do episodes twice monthly, and I hope you will come listen. Bye, guys. <laughs>